Hey everyone, it's Sharon with the Cozy Junk Studio and I'm sorry I'm not doing a face intro today, but I didn't want to delay this video any longer. It's been quite a few days and I know you all are waiting for a release, so let's get started. We're going to be making some gorgeous romantic summer DIYs. These definitely can be used throughout the seasons if you don't want to just use them for summer, but I thought they were perfect. Now we're starting out with this tray that I have previously painted and didn't use. And now I'm just going to take these three colors and just kind of wipe over the whole tray and then take a brush and fill in the little crevices because I want to give this a gorgeous multicolor sort of not necessarily ombre but just blend the colors in through pouncing you're going to see that coming up to give it a beautiful hazy romantic look so that's what i'm doing with these colors and the sponge this is just a dollar tree sponge that i cut down now the rectangle shape does not help with this with the blending definitely gives those harsh lines but i used my finesse with my uh pouncing to blend those spots in and hopefully you can't tell any harsh edges by the time we get finished with this. Once I let this dry, this is a chalk paint that's on here and a clay paint. We're going to seal this with my favorite matte Rust-Oleum chalked clear coat that is in the description box below linked. I get that from Amazon. I love that stuff. Now that I have all of the colors, I decided that it wasn't bright enough because we're going to do some cool techniques on here and I need my background to be a little bit more hazy, a little bit more lighter and romantic. So I just added some of that DIY white swan. Now you can use any kind of paints for this. Whatever you have in your stash, pull them out. I'm just using these colors because I really wanted to use some gorgeous summer colors. I have this beautiful French stencil that we're going to be using as a background for our next step of this project. Now I wanted this to have a little bit of a, of a gilded look to it because of romantic uh, reminds me especially summer romance has a little bit of gold and glimmer like the sun so we're just going to add this to pure gold from folk art paint I think I purchased this uh, at Walmart and I'm going to be pouncing two coats on top of this stencil. Once we finish this and let the gold dry, I will put a coat of that clear coat. I did tell you I already sealed this, but I did not. I put this gold on and you'll see me sealing this coming up. Now to finish this piece off, I want to use some gorgeous wildflowers. So I went through all my supplies and I found my IOD. It's a painterly floral transfer and I'm going to be using some of the lavender out of it and the beautiful painterly roses which looks like they've been painted with a brush. That's going to give this a summer romance look that reminds me of flowing dresses with flowers and being out in fields. I just love this look. You guys know my signature is dark and moody but I too love this type of video. I love this type of aesthetic even if it's not something I decorate with, I still appreciate so many different kinds of art and home decor and designs and styles. Uh, I definitely consider myself more of an eclectic uh, person when it comes to the types of styles that I love to create. So we're just gonna put some of these transfers on here and I'm gonna let you watch this for a little bit. I'm not gonna bore you with it all, but if you've not used transfers, you just peel them off you lay them down and you hold them in place and you uh, take something, uh, they come with a little transfer uh, stick, like a little plastic stick that you can use and you just kind of rub them until they start peeling off and then you wanna seal them with something. You'll see what we do sealing this shortly. One thing I forgot to mention is you also want to make sure that you burnish these on really well with either the back of the transfer plastic or I've been using my hand just to rub them in. Now we're going to use some clear wax by Debbie's Design Diary. Put that on real quick and then we're going to white wax over this to give that more of a dreamy or romantic look. Generally with waxes you want to wipe back the excess so with the white wax, I left it on for just a little bit before I decided to do that because I wanted this to have a dreamy look, especially around the edges like a halo. So I mostly focused on 
doing a quick coat of wiping it all back except for around those edges as much. I left more around the edges and I cleared more of that white wax off in the center so that it, the, so the image was clearer than the edges and they looked more dreamy. Now to continue on with that beautiful gilded romantic look, I'm going to be taking some of this Debbie's Design Diary gold wax to go around the edges and to hit some of those beautiful curves in this piece as well as drag some of it across the whole beautiful tray itself. Now I don't use this wax very often because the most recent gold wax has been very liquidy and this is due to its natural consistency. It used to be really thick and closer to rub and buff but it is not. The last few batches have not been and from my understanding it's because it's made with all natural elements which is fine but it just doesn't work for me in most of my cases but because this has a very liquidy sort of sheer see-through consistency at this time it's working perfect for some of these projects today. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this tray. Does it scream romantic summer to you? All right, our next project is going to be using a skeleton frame and it's from a lamp. Talk about romantic and dreamy. This one definitely falls into the category. So I really wish I would have had a larger one of these because it would have been so much grander, but this one's going to be a great example for you all to take and make your own from. Now, this is not my inspiration. I got this from Pinterest, Pinterest inspiration. It was a little different than this. Of course, I put my own spin on it. This step that I'm doing right now is not necessary, so you can definitely bypass this, but I've never made one of these, so I thought that I needed to paint this frame green because we're gonna be using some moss on here, and I thought if this showed through that I would at least have a green base. It doesn't end up showing through, except for uh, around the sort of part that holds the bulb that definitely needed a paint color, but the whole thing itself does not. So the first step is I'm gonna be using some moss and I'm gonna cover this whole frame with a coat of moss. I'm using hot glue because it dries really quickly. The moss sticks to it. Now there's definitely other glues you could use. You'll need to wait on drying time with those and it'll probably get pretty messy, but I'm using hot glue. It works best for me. I'm gonna cover this whole frame. You don't have to be too crazy during this step. Just get a good cover on there because you're gonna be doing a lot more to this and you're gonna add more moss at the end. Doing this again, I will not take so much time and I'll just slap a decent coat on there and move on to the next step. So the next step, I started putting flowers on this and quickly realized I needed a base of greenery. So I got my greenery on the way that I thought that I wanted it as a base to add my florals to. So I'm giving you a couple steps that I definitely would do different so that if you do it, it definitely makes more sense. Um, of course, you can do it however you want. If you want to add flowers and then put your greenery in, again, sometimes people already have that down when they make floral things, so you do whatever works best for you. But next time, I will start with the greenery and then move on to the florals. All right, so here you can see I've gotten all my moss on there and I'm starting out, like I said, with a few of the florals. And when I put florals on, I like to put a flower and then a little bit of some type of accent piece around it and then another flower, generally a different type of flower. Um, you can do these again however you want. And I got it in my mind that I was gonna do the greenery. So I stopped with the flowers and I just sparsely put greenery of different colors around this. I'm also wanting some pieces that kind of hang off and flow from this to make it look more interesting. So these are some vines from Dollar Tree. Most of these florals are Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, and Timu. If you are interested, those are the places that I get mine. And of course, I get them when they're on sale. Now I'm just using my hot glue and just holding. You definitely wanna hold these for a few seconds because the, of the plastic they need to bond to something for a few seconds before they'll hold. So make sure you're doing that. And I'm just using a finger protector because you definitely burn yourself with the moss and florals super easy. 
And I'm just going to show you how I add a few of different things, including ferns, these berries from the Dollar Tree, which are green, these little white florals. I think these were from Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree. I just try to add a lot of different types of florals and greenery to make it look like it's a bunch of things you pulled out of the forest, out of wildflower fields, and you just made a, a crown to go on something. I, I love those beautiful enchanted type things from movies that they use all of these gorgeous things together and make it look just so romantic. This is this is the epitome of foresty, florally romance. We're going to do a few of these and then we're going to move on to the next step because this has a couple more parts to it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking and I really wanted to put a bird on the inside where the bulb would be on this lamp. Now you could cut that piece off, but I decided to put just a couple flowers on each side as like a hanging floral kissing ball down in the middle. I just put two back to back. Um, it just reminded me of like a kissing, the floral kissing balls. But like I said, you can put a bird, something different. We are gonna add a bird, but we're gonna be doing that somewhere else. Originally, I thought about adding a wood slice with a live edge on the very top of this and putting a bird as like a finial. And the more I thought about it, I knew I had a lot of different size bird nests. So I grabbed one that I'm gonna make fit perfect down in and around the top of this. So these little nests I got from Timu, you can get tons of different sizes. I just took my thumbs and kind of am pressing down the center to comb this in the bottom so it will go down inside of that pretty well and then leave that beautiful edge on the top of this piece. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bird to this and some more moss to kind of finish this piece off. We will add a hanger and I'll show you that coming up. So before we add our bird, I'm gonna put some moss down in there and I'm gonna drag it down over the sides with a little bit of hot glue to make it look like it's kind of spilling out over the nest. And then our little bird kind of tilted its body down in. So to keep its breast up, I'm putting just a wood block down in there and I'm gonna put the breast of the bird on top of that wood block. I'm using some E6000 for our bird and some hot glue to make sure that this bird doesn't go anywhere from this nest and that way it looks like it's actually sitting in the nest instead of tilting almost face down in the nest. I finished this piece off by adding a little bit more moss behind the bird on the frame and I had add a twine. I used twine to tie on the inside underneath of the lamp to make my hanger. Now you all have to let me know, is this something that you might try? I think this would be gorgeous for an outdoor wedding, for a sunroom, for a front porch. Let me know in the comment section below. Now this next project is definitely outside of my comfort zone as far as color, but we're gonna start out with this piece that I think is homemade. It looks like a piece of plywood that someone has painted or stenciled and used a black Sharpie to train to uh, outline around this wash soak relax so i'm afraid that's going to bleed i am sealing this with a sealable uh, top coat or a top coat sealer this one is a clear polycrylic i'm going to let that dry really well before we move on to the next step now i love purple but specific colors of purple i don't like the very bright purples so I thought we would do a sort of lavender with a little bit of hint of this berry and this sort of black berry color. Now these are all folk art paints and chalk paints in themselves. And I've been dying to use these. You all, I ordered quite a few of these a while back and they've been in my supplies. Yes, I know I have a problem with paint, but it's okay because I've really been pushing myself to use a lot of these things and the folk art line has so many colors of summer and winter and fall. It's amazing the amount of colors they have compared to 
other paints. Now I'm talking about the chalk line. Uh, now my DIY clay paints, yes, there's a lot of those colors and you definitely can mix them to whatever you want, but folk art, they come in so many colors. You don't have to do any mixing. Of course, they're chalk, so they're not the clay based, which definitely has a use on their own. But I love chalk paint just as much as I love clay paint for different reasons. So let's get on to this project because I could sit here and talk about paint all day. That's how much I love paint. Right, so I added what, a baby pink in there to help lighten these colors up. And we're gonna do the similar effect that we did to that first tray. So I'm gonna start out with this berry and some of that pink. What I want to end up with is a shadow or kind of a halo around this whole thing of colors. And it's not gonna look like, of course, the rainbow or anything, but I want the berry to be kind of on one corner, sort of in a halo, and then I want the darker purpley to be kind of in another halo on the other end. But before we get to that, we're just gonna do the whole piece like that, keeping the lightest color in the center because that's where we want our light to reflect off of is that center. And once we put, of course, some transfers on here, we're gonna need that lighter background to help play off of those. Okay, so I sort of have it, you know, the way I want it at this point, and now I'm going to work on those edges. And I'm getting the darkest colors to this one corner, but mostly of that plum color. And then I'm using that berry on that other corner. Of course, there's still some plum left on the sponge. Really, this is just all about play. It's all about experimenting. You definitely want to do this. Um, you can, if you don't want to do it on your actual piece that you're making, I'm actually just doing it on here because it's just paint. You can always add more colors to fix something that you don't like. So if you're not comfortable with that, you can use do this on scrap pieces of wood. You can do it on paper. There's so many ways you can do this. Once I get this to the way that I want it, how I kind of explained it to you all with that sort of lighter color in the middle and those darker colors on the edge looking like a berry is more on one side and the plum is more on the other, then I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. I'm going to seal it with some of that matte clear coat before I put my transfers on. And I'm gonna make sure that that clear coat is very dry before I start with my transfers because I've definitely not done that before and it will pull the paint up. All right, so now I have my background the way that I want it. I've let my paint uh, dry. I've already done my sealing and we're gonna be using one of these transfers, well, two of these transfers from the new IOD Spring 2024 Joie de Roses. Now, these came in beautiful colors, but they also had this gorgeous, neutral, beigey, white, with some hints of yellow and some warm tones, and this is gonna play off of that purple. I don't wanna put a lot of dark colors or bright colors on top of this purple and make it look too busy, so this neutral, these neutral florals is gonna just finish this piece off. So I'm choosing two that I like, and I wanna put one on one corner and one on the other corner to get the look that I want and basically make this like a piece of artwork. Now that we have both of the transfers on where I want them, I'm going to add some of that white wax because again, we want that beautiful dreamy look and white wax definitely is something that you can use to do that with. And yes, I covered this piece heavily with the white wax let it sit for just a little bit, and now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wipe off most of it in the center, bringing a lot of that color back and giving a little bit of a halo effect around this from the white wax. Because some of the white wax did stick a little bit more than what I wanted it in the center of this, I used a little bit of clear wax to pull some more of that white wax back off. You definitely can do that with clear wax to manipulate the white to get the look that you want. Now, a lot of people are like, well, why did you put so much white wax on to begin with? Well, even though I did pull a lot of it back off, lots of it stuck down in all those crevices on that wood, and the only way to do that is to get it on there thickly down in those cracks. I want you all to let me know in the comments below what color, if you had to use, is outside of your comfort zone or not one of your favorite colors. Comment on that below. Now, to keep with that gorgeous gilded look and that dreamy 
uh, romantic. We're going to be using the same wax and kind of going around the edges a little bit and then pulling some of this down almost like it's dripping a little bit from the tops and up from the bottom. Even though we've done all this to this piece of wood, which is basically what it is, I knew that I wanted something else to make it look like it was more of a piece of art. So I knew that I wanted to put some type of ribbon hanger on it just in case someone wants to hang it that way. I'm also going to put a um, sawtooth hanger on the back in case someone doesn't want to use the ribbon. But I was thinking the edges needed something and I always kind of just rumble through my supplies to get more ideas. And I remember that I have these gorgeous metal corners that I bought when I was doing junk journaling to use on like book corners and I have some large ones so we're going to use those add to the corners add some gorgeous green and cream ribbon now I started out using my metal clips or uh, tin snips to pull these apart but I didn't need to I could just use my fingers I'm using hot glue but if this wasn't going to be on display and was going to be in use or maybe in the heat I would definitely have used some type of different glue because of the metal sticking to the wood, but the hot glue worked perfect for this. I really enjoyed stepping outside of my comfort zone on this one and would love to know your thoughts on it. Comment below what you think and here are the photos coming up. There are different, a couple different colors and it's because of the way that I photographed one hanging and one sitting. I love both colors that's showing up, but the piece is more like the first photo. Our next project is truly a summer romantic planter. It's definitely falling in the category of summer, adding those gorgeous plants to, or even tomato plants or flowers. Now this is a gorgeous rustic planter. I got these in a set of three. I thrifted them. Everything in this uh, uh, video was thrifted, of course. These look like they came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using this gorgeous folk art paints in these greens and blues. Now we're kind of getting in the whole French Marie Antoinette colors and wait, wait until you see the project we're going to be doing closer to the end. We definitely do a true Marie Antoinette style of these colors with the pinks and blues, not just the greens. All right, so I'm loving doing this sponging technique. You guys know I love to mix paint. I started my channel out mixing colors, doing the drippy effect. If you've not seen those videos, some of them are well over a year old. Go back and look at them. That is how I love to do. I've done these techniques for years, mixing paints. It's so much fun. If you've never done it, definitely try this. You can't mess it up. You truly cannot mess this up. All right, so. Again, we're back to the mixing of colors, making sure I have some whites in there to get that lighter color. I'm not necessarily doing a huge halo effect on this one, but we're gonna be adding some transfers. So I definitely wanted a little bit of that lighter color where I'm gonna be placing my transfers. And I'm just doing this on the whole piece, even on the top edges and getting down in those crevices. Now, because I'm gonna be placing my transfers kind of catty corner, I decided to go ahead and use some of just the white paint by itself to do some halo effect just on the corners, not all the way around like we did on the other pieces. I also add a little bit of that dark green just in splotches to give it like a mottled look on top of the colors we've already mixed. So because I'm using transfers, I really want some text in the background. I grabbed my Kind Disregard stamp from IOD and I used white ink. If I had this part to do over, I would have used paint, white paint. Now we've done plenty of paint with stamping in this or on this channel and I should have just went with my gut and pulled that paint out, but I didn't. I used the white IOD ink and you can see it a little bit, which may be great. You know, maybe it doesn't need to be so pronounced but it's very faint. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the white ink and just kind of stamp randomly on every side of this planter. Once I finish that, I'm gonna tie in some more of that ink by taking the ink pad and just hazing around the edges to add a little bit more of that ink and brighten up those corners a little bit. We're gonna be adding the one of the uh, transfers from the new IOD 2024 spring release. I did let you know in the beginning of the video, you can find these products for the cheapest price with $9 flat rate shipping 
at AuntBeesAttic.com. Now I still have a lot of the pages left in this transfer, but I had some little like nitty pieces that was just kind of left off to the side from a, uh, a couple of the pages that I used before. So we're gonna use these on this planner, just kind of adding a little bit here and there to each uh, side of this planner, making the whole piece have something on each side that you look at. I really love the color of this transfer with these gorgeous muted blues and greens in the background. I feel like this transfer could definitely go with so many colors that it would contrast off of almost anything, even peaches and reds like that is in this transfer. I do have, like I said, several pages left. I would like to do something larger with it. So maybe if I do something larger, we might do something as a black background. I think that would be so beautiful. So I do go ahead and distress the edges of this a little bit. We're going to do kind of what we've done with the other pieces. I'm going to seal these transfers in with clear wax. Also, the clear wax is going to put that coat on there because we're going to do the white wax to give this more of a dreamy look like we've done our other pieces. We're going to wipe that back. And this time we're going to use some of the DIY copper patina for our highlight to give this its romantic sort of gilded look using a copper to kind of go with the colors of the florals, which have that sort of redsy, peachy, coppery look. So to use the, or to do this, I'm going to use a fan brush because I feel like with these pieces, the see-through effect is what I want with the gold or the copper and this fan brush is going to lightly add this on giving that sheer look to it. I'm going to do the edges sort of a little bit on the main pieces but not much. It's mostly going to be hitting the edges. Now this copper patina is actually a top coat so it does not need to be sealed and this is the last step of this piece. Let me know what you think about this piece and so far which one's your favorite. So I had a lot of fun making this next project. I grabbed these two bases. One of them is one I thrifted and the other is a Dollar Tree one that I painted white during the winter and never used. These wood bowls, I was given a set of these by one of my family members. We're going to be making adorable mushrooms. Now I don't know that mushrooms are romantic but wait till you see what we do to them and then you can let me know if they fall in the summer romantic category. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use E6000 to glue these together and I'm gonna let them set overnight. I realized I didn't have the camera on, so now I'm just showing you how I added the glue to the rim of the base and then pressed it straight down and this is how I let them glue upside down sitting just like this. Now that we've let these sit overnight, they are super sturdy. They look adorable already just the way they are, but we are going to romanticize these a little bit or at least give them a summer vibe. Now I wanna leave the underneath caps wood. I'm not gonna be painting those, but I will be painting the tops and doing some other things to the bases. So because the DIY clay paint sticks to everything, I'm gonna go ahead and give the bases of these two coats of crinoline in the DIY Debbie's Design Diary paint and let them dry thoroughly. Once those bases dry, I'm gonna seal those with my favorite matte clear coat. Then I'm gonna give the tops of the wood of the bowls one coat of this petticoat pink in DIY clay paint and I'm gonna let that dry. Now that everything is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this paint inlay i'm trying to use some of my stuff up and i've not used paint inlays in a really really long time you all i have several of these and they need to be used so i got this floral one it's these gorgeous flowers in the pinks and corals and greens and yellows we're going to be making the tops of our mushrooms floral patterned and to do that we're going to use these paint inlays now, one of them I use a whole sheet on, and the other one I cut up in small pieces. To use a paint inlay, you wanna make sure you have a thick coat of wet paint to start with. Then you're going to either use the whole image on top of that, or you're gonna cut it up into pieces to fit 
whatever your project is or how you want your pattern to work. Now, I thought I would try just a full square on top of this whole mushroom smash down. Of course, where it's round, there's definitely creases and there's wrinkles. I knew that. So I really wanted to see how it would work with a whole piece and I wanted to see how it would work with a piece cut up. And to be honest, I don't think it's much difference. In one, you have the wrinkle in your paint places left. And in the other one, you have all the cut up piece edges, which neither one matter to me because these pieces are supposed to look handmade. They're supposed to look um, probably vintage, which gives that all that wrinkled look. So, you know, when you're doing a flat surface, it's much easier to use a paint inlay and not to get wrinkles. However, I it didn't bother me. So you do whatever works best for you, but we're gonna get that coat on here. Once we get these paint inlays on here, we're going to mist the very backs of them thoroughly, and we're gonna uh, mop up the extra water, and we're gonna let them set and dry for at least one hour or more. As I mist these, the backs of these, I'm taking my finger and patting them lightly to make sure they're making good contact with that wet paint making sure not to press too hard or to smear or to smash into the paint just lightly tapping them making sure they make contact with that paint once we let those dry for at least an hour or you can even let them sit overnight which i think i did with mine here is what they look like we are going to re-mist that paper very well and make sure it gets good and saturated and then we're just going to pull it off slowly pull this off and it's so satisfying and these turn out beautiful i didn't have any places that i saw that looked like the paint did not make contact with once i started misting i did the same thing i just mopped up the extra water made sure that the paper was saturated by kind of tapping it and i let this little one sit while i did the first one the same way and by the time I got finished saturating the top or the larger one or the taller one and got it saturated and mopped up, I was able to go right back to the smaller one and start pulling the paint inlay paper off. Now, as I pull it off, you can see there's still tons of paint or images left on these little pieces that can be used at least one more time, if not two. Uh, so the paint inlays, although they are a little bit costly, the amount of times you can use them and um, the amount of projects you, you can use them on really, really break down to really inexpensive per project. Now, when I started peeling this off, I left this in real time. I'm going to leave this in real time all the way until I get to one little area that feels still like it didn't get misted enough to resaturate that paper so i just go in with my mister and re-mist it let that sit while i'm peeling off another piece and then go back to it and it works perfect you guys are going to get a kick out of this taller mushroom i totally peel that whole sheet off in one go and it turns out amazing i don't know if it's because it sat saturated while I was waiting on, or while I was peeling the other piece off. But look at that. I mean, it's just perfect. And look at how much the image left on the paint inlay still looks brand new. It doesn't look like it had any paint taken off of it. Now you can see right here, see all those creases those wrinkles see that pink petticoat paint in there so the next project i do that paint will transfer to that project so you want to be mindful of that when you're reusing these and that's going to be gorgeous on a project of having the little bit of that pink paint added to it look at this you guys i am in love what do you think so we're going to not we're not finished yet so just wait so I really wanna do something to the base of these. They have that crinoline color, which is cream, and it's the same color cream that is in this paint inlay. So it works very well, but I thought that we would add some paint, kinda of like we've done with the gold gilding wax, 
and we're going to be adding some gold to these as well but before we do that i have these Finabear paints in my stash that I've had for years. Some of them are drying out. I try to open them up and spritz water in to keep them fresh. You want to make sure you're checking your older supplies because they will dry out. So if you spritz water in them, these can be activated with water. They can change colors with water. So it's fine to do that. Um, so we're going to use this green just to kind of wipe, kind of like I do and put a little bit of streaking on the bases of these mushrooms. So once I finished that and I'm letting that part dry, I went ahead and took a baby wipe to get the pink petticoat paint that kind of went under the rim because like I said, I wanted to leave the underneath of these wood. So I just took a wet wipe, which reactivates this paint unless it's been sealed. And so far we've not sealed this paint or the um, paint inlay. We're going to do that coming up so i'm just taking this wet wipe and just kind of using my thumb kind of scraping a little bit and because the paint's dry and it just comes right off now it is recommended not to brush over these paint inlays because they can be reactivated with a clear coat however i used my matte rust-oleum and just made thick swipes over top of it and i had no blurring i had no uh, paint come back off on my brush it was still clear when I finished I don't know if it was because it's this matte clear coat it's the rust-oleum chalked it's very matte so maybe a shinier might have done different or more chemically I'm not sure it is recommended that you use a clear spray sealer but I just brushed over I had no problem I did a little test spot it didn't give me any issue so I just continued on and finished this piece off by clear coating this and then I did clear coat over the green but the next step we're going to be using some of the DIY gold liquid patina to brush over the whole stems of these mushrooms and I want you to tell me what you think about how they look to be honest, I really wasn't sure I was going to like these. I am, wasn't a fan of this rose chintz, even though I bought it. Uh, it's I bought it when it first came out, but I love how these turned out, and I love the texture on the baby one, but I think the tall one is my most favorite. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This next project I've had for a while sitting in my own stash or in my own vignettes in my studio. I love it, I think it's gorgeous, but the orangey color kind of reminds me of the 90s. So we're gonna give this a makeover. I thrifted this and gave $6 for it. We're gonna make it look similar to a concrete statue, but more on the white side with some black, or not black, but dark gray highlights, if that makes sense. I started out giving this a base coat of white and then I thought better of it and thought, you know, I'm just going to go straight in with the white paint mixed in with salt wash to give this that concrete look instead of doing double work. You know, I thought maybe the white base would give it a little bit of tooth for everything to grab to, but that's the, that's the point and the job of the salt wash. So I went ahead and mixed up some of that and added a really good coat of it even making sure I had some crumbly bits left and some scraped on thick places left. So with salt wash, you are supposed to mix 50% of whatever you want in it, paint, etc., to 50% of or equal parts of the salt wash powder. I mix mine to the thickness that I think I want to put on a project. So that's just, you know, whatever you want to do a lot of people mix it that way sometimes i'll mix it thinner if i just want a little tiny bit of texture i will definitely add more water than what it's called for all right so you can see there i'm just kind of patting that extra leaving those kind of chunks on there because all that's going to show up when we do the next few steps i didn't show it but i put a clear matte coat sealer on this before i move to the next step because i'm going to be doing some drippy technique to get some of the DIY Debbie's Design Diary in the old school color. It's like a really dark gray. 
and I want it to get into the angels or the cherub's eyes, mouth, ears, all those little crevices to give that sort of a black haze. Now you definitely can use something like black wax for this, but I wanted it more, well, I wanted it darker in certain areas than the black wax could give. Plus I didn't want to wax the whole thing and then wipe back. Basically, I'm just taking the paint and dabbing it where I want it, spraying it with water. I'm going back over it with my brush so it kind of leaks down into those crevices. If it's not enough, I just continue to go back. Now, once I get it to where I want it, I'm gonna take some of that original white paint and just scrape kind of over top of the black to give it a bright look in just little areas, but not many places. I also do the same techniques on the back of this cherub or angel because I want the whole piece to be consistent. I just don't show that on video. If I did all of this on video, I think the total was six, no, this was almost eight hours of video by the time I got done with these 10 projects and I really cut it down a lot. Otherwise we would be here all day. So if you have any questions, just pop them in the comment section below. You guys know I answer every comment and we have large discussions on things. So definitely ask me questions if there's something that you think I missed or didn't share. Now I have already sealed my little guy or girl with that matte clear coat that I love. And we have to add some gorgeous gold gilding uh, to this. And this time I'm using rub and buff because this piece definitely calls for it. It's concrete. I need something a little thicker and I want something that's not going to be as transparent on my little angel so i'm just going to hit some highlights on it and i have a little beautiful crown that's made for this i made it off camera it's similar to the projects we've already made it was a wreath just a grapevine wreath a tiny one and i added some florals to it it's going to crown our gorgeous angel and make him look like he is a beautiful romantic little cherub you all will have to let me know what you think about this one. I am in love and this one's gonna stay in my collection just like he was before. This next project is a really, really easy one. I just grabbed a piece of scrap wood out of my stash and I'm giving it a good coat of this White Swan DIY chalk paint. I'm gonna let that dry real thoroughly. Now I'm not worried about bleed through because we're gonna be using a gorgeous napkin on here. I have some that have birds on them and florals and to me birds scream summer they also can be romantic and of course the florals are are too now the colors on this the beautiful grays and blacks and whites and pinks coming up are very very romantic looking to me of course they can fall in other genres as well but this is the napkin we're going to be using I have gotten most of my napkins from eBay in lots from, there's so many people that sell them and they sell them really, really cheap. So check eBay, Etsy is another good place for sure. And then of course, sometimes I'll pick them up in stores, but I prefer buying one to two napkins versus a whole pack. And there are people that that is what they do. That is their business. They put together packs of napkins and they sell them singularly or one or two in packs of four or five, 10 different designs. So that's how I purchase mine. Now I've already used Mod Podge and put a good coat on over the white paint after it dried. I let the white paint dry. I put a coat of Mod Podge. Now I'm gonna be ironing on this napkin. I'm gonna use this uh, non-stick sheet and my mini iron to reheat that Mod Podge glue to attach my napkin to the wood. After I iron that on, I'm gonna go ahead and sand those edges down. Before I seal this, uh, I'm gonna get all that excess off and the sanding just gives it a really clean edge. Now I'm gonna be using DIY clear wax to seal this since this is just gonna be a self shelf sitter. If you're not gonna be using this to sit something on, the wax will work out perfect and it won't wrinkle your napkin. My good friend Kendra over at Late Night Creations here on YouTube, check out her channel, was the one that I saw doing that with the wax. So I thought that was such a great idea. Now I'm using just some ribbon of different colors and contrast to go around the edges of this. I'm gonna put some bows at the top to finish this off. I will paint the back of this white. I like the back of my pieces to be complete, even though I don't have it painted yet, but I just used some just plain old white paint 
to finish that back off and this is just going to be a little shelf sitter now i could put a sawtooth hanger on here i might just in case someone wants to hang it i will be putting this in my vendor booth for sale let me know what you think of this piece it's not as involved as the other pieces we've done with all the techniques but you do get to see a couple different things uh, on this one and it's something quite simple that gives a gorgeous summer romantic look to go along with our other projects. This next project, I was given this uh, with a lot of other things and it's a gorgeous silver little box. I thought this would make a beautiful Marie Antoinette inspired piece. It says it has a $15 clearance sticker on it. I'm not sure where that sticker or tag is from, but I'm going to turn this into a little French um, vintage looking piece by using some pinks and some blues. First, I'm gonna start out with this beautiful blue chalk paint by Folk Art. This is like a powdery blue or a baby blue. I just needed a base because when we add the waxes, I'm gonna show you coming up, it gives it more of the blue colors and the pinks that I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna give this a really good coat and let this completely dry before we move on to the next step. I'm gonna be using some of my Finabare waxes. I've had these for a very long time. Mine are actually in the metal tins. They stopped making those years ago. They're now in tubes. You can find them on Amazon. They are a Prima marketing product, but with the caveat that Finabare helped, I think, design these. Finabare has their own YouTube channel as well, so check out most of those products are really awesome to use. So I just picked out like a blue turquoise color, a pink, and a mint green, and I'm going to rub those just to my liking all over the lid of this, hitting those high spots and all over the actual box itself. Now this box is like a hard resin feel to it. It's not ceramic or anything like that. It's not anything expensive, but these colors end up making this, again, kind of look like that whole Marie Antoinette pinks and powdery blues. And we're going to add, of course, some of that gilding gold to give it that finished look. I think all of these colors are just so light and airy for summer. They just seem so pastel like gorgeous colors like the sun has in it during the summer those blues and greens and reds as it sets in the sky or even the morning sky to me and this definitely could be like a french country piece or just a french provincial a little bit of a higher end look as far as the coloring not necessarily the piece is expensive itself or anything like that once we finish adding all these colors and getting them blended in, now to tone it back some, we are gonna use some white wax because the blue is quite bright on here and I don't want to get too crazy with color when I'm trying to do something that is kind of dreamy, summery look here. So we're gonna use that white wax and we're gonna cover the whole piece and then we're going to wipe some of that back and then we're gonna add some of that DIY gold wax because of its sheerness to finish this piece off. Now you definitely could use rub and buff on this or even some gold paint, kind of like we used in the beginning of this video. Uh, the rub and buff to me is more of a solid consistency where even gold paint has a more translucent look if you only use one layer. I just wanna take this time to thank you all for watching this video. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get these out. Uh, this one was 10 projects, so I knew it would take me longer, but I really couldn't stop picking out things to make over for this romantic summer video. So that's kind of why it took so long, and a lot of the processes take a long time. It's not just like I'm putting one layer of paint on and that's it. These are actual in-depth projects with several different processes and different things that we're doing to them. So you're kind of getting a video that is not just basic, oh, I'm changing the color of paint, which there's nothing wrong with that. And I really 
like to do those kind of videos I just don't ever end up doing them I always am like oh I've got to do this and I've got to do this so thank you so much for watching being patient while the videos are being made and for all my new subscribers welcome you guys I've been welcoming you in the comments I've also been talking to all of the other subscribers that comment that's been here on this channel for a long time I see you that's commenting over and over I know your names I see how you're commenting more than once and on each video and more than once sometimes on one video all right so our very last project is this hat now I always pick up hats at Goodwill they're only a dollar at our Goodwills that's not changed for years so hopefully it won't but this one kind of was faded the leather around here that I'm pulling off had kind of stained the hat so I thought what a great hat to make over to just hang as a door piece or just some type of summer decor piece and I had thrifted a huge bag this was like a eucalyptus curtain that someone had ordered um, from some type of website and when I opened it up I knew it was eucalyptus but I didn't know it was a curtain and when I opened it up I was like wow so I've been using it for a long time and I just cut off a piece and I'm just going to put this all the way around the hat to start out with. I like to do my greenery first and then add my florals and other kind of little side pieces on top of my greenery base. And so that's what we're going to do here. I'm using these wire ties to get this uh, attached to the hat and then once I do that, then we'll start adding in some flowers. Now I'm only gonna show you a little bit of the flowers. I really just wanted to show you how I attached this to begin with. And I do show you that some of the flowers I do hot glue on, and some of them have their own wire that I wire, but I only do a few, and then this piece will have a bow added to it. I really felt like that it deserved a ribbon, uh, just a neutral ribbon after we put some of these beautiful flowers on here um, but right now I'm just adding some ferns I love ferns they are one of my most favorite plants I cannot grow them they die every single time and I have a green thumb I have a lot of uh, plants in my sunroom that I've grown for years but for some reason I kill ferns go figure so once we get this kind of down the way we want it like I said I'm adding some of these florals here just around a few pieces. I don't want the whole hat covered in flowers. I want it mostly to be greenery. And then I grab a gorgeous cream colored satin ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. And I wanted this oversized, really loopy, just hanging down saggy bow coming off of this to finish this piece off. And I'll put a little hanger on the very back of it so it can be hung and put it on a door or an entryway it's just so gorgeous for summer and it looks very romantic to me so if you have any old hats definitely pull those out and use them for something like this they make such a beautiful statement piece and really inexpensive once you add some florals i also was using florals that i had small pieces of that just needed to be used up so let me know what you think of this last project let me know what you think of this video i'm so happy that i'm on my second video since things have calmed down here at the house and i plan on trying to get out more videos and with all that being said you know i will see you guys soon in the next video i'm hoping maybe in the next couple of weeks to do another mask making video we'll see i think i want to do two more in that series and that'll give a total of five videos for that series to kind of give people something to look at to go by when they're trying to work on a vendor booth uh, and then we may start a new series other than our regular you know just dark and moody i always do those and then of course different styles like this romantic summer one and i will see you guys real soon again thank you so much for watching bye bye